where you just go to the stream tab and you just click right here, create an announcement. You can even schedule these announcements as well. So if you know that at the very beginning of the week, you, you're talking to your kids and you want their textbook on Friday and you want an announcement to be posted on Thursday evening at six o'clock, you can do that uh, by just creating an announcement and posting that. Uh, so this is how you would do that is you would create your announcement and then you would just go to schedule and then you just choose what you want to do, when you want it to, to uh, come up and you just you know type in the time that you want it to be posted at and just hit schedule and it will automatically post. The same is true for assignments. Uh, it just makes it a really, really cool feature. So here's another thing you could do. Spend less time at the copy machine. You know, with as classrooms become more digitalized and more and more students are using technology and we're using iPads or we're using Chromebooks or MacBooks or PCs, whatever you're using, Google Classroom is the perfect tool to make digital copies for students. So there's uh, two other ways that you can post something, uh, and this is an assignment, you can actually post so that students can view a file and it just gives them view only rights. Uh, they don't have the ability to make any changes. They could make a copy if they want, but this is perfect for students maybe seeing directions, maybe you have a rubric, maybe you have uh, a sample piece of work that you want to share with students. Um, that's a perfect way of doing that. Now, right here, I love this, make a copy for each student. So let's say, for instance, you want students to write an essay. Uh, maybe you want them to develop a presentation, and you have a template that you want them to be able to use. Well, just make a copy for each student, and now automatically when they open it up, it'll make a copy, and it will put it um, in their Google Drive so that they can have access to it. And then they can turn it right back into you when the assignment is complete. What I also like is that not only can you make copies for students, but you have some uh, really some ability to use the technology um, in so many creative ways. And one I love, and this is available on Chromebooks and also the mobile version, is that not only can you just turn in regular Google Documents and heck, you can any attachment you can use your camera on your device. So if you had, say for instance, a worksheet that you wanted students to complete by hand, but you wanted them to turn it in, um, they could take a, a shot of it, a screenshot of it to scan it in and turn it into you. And that way you could actually, you know, grade it and mark it up uh, in Google Classroom. I'll show you how you could do that later. Or maybe for instance, they had a poster, they created a poster and you want those students to turn in that poster. Maybe there's a video that they created of themselves presenting, they could use their camera or they could just upload uh, that content uh, right to Google Classroom. Okay, uh, I love this as well. So we're talking about posting and uh, posting from Chrome. There's this Chrome extension called Post Straight from Chrome. Um, actually, I'm sorry, it's called Share to Classroom extension. Uh, and what you can do is you can push links out to students. You could make a post. So let's say you're doing some research and you found an article that you want your students to read. You're on that website. Just simply choose the Share to Classroom extension and it'll post directly to your Google Classroom. There's actually some other really cool features of doing it as well. You might want to check that out. So uh, another option for you is to differentiate assignments. Did you know that you can differentiate in Google Classroom? So you could create an assignment and then right up here in the top right hand corner of your assignment, it probably will say all students. If you click on that, um, all students is generally checked. OK, that means that this assignment is going to go out to every single student. If you uncheck all students, and then you select specific students that you want this to go out to, it will post directly to their stream, only the students that you've selected. Students who have not been selected will not receive this particular assignment. So if you wanted to offer two or three different ways of doing this assignment, or two or three different versions of this assignment, you could very easily do it by simply choosing that feature, and that works for all assignments that you have. Um, this is another way that you could do it is perhaps you're doing group work, and you've assigned students to work in groups, and you want to create a collaborative board, discussion board, where they can share what they're doing in class, who's doing what, share resources, 
once again, you could post an assignment uh, or a discussion question and choose those specific students in that group, and they would only be able to see their discussion board, not every, everybody else. You as a teacher get to see everybody, but the only specific students that are selected get to see that particular discussion board. Uh, I like this as well. This is from Alice Keeler. If you have, aren't following her on Twitter, you definitely need to. Uh, she's an amazing resource uh, for Google Classroom in particular, but she gave this idea of differentiating assignments where she put the choice in the student's hand now. And so there's uh, three different versions of the assignment and that she offered a scaffold and support. And what students did is they used the private messaging feature in that assignment to then to communicate to the teacher, hey, I think I would like to do this assignment, here's why. Uh, so really, really neat way of differentiating. All right, let's get into this new classwork tab because there's been a lot of buzz about it. And so what exactly does it do? And so this is where you're going to assign work and you can assign work and create what are called topics, which topics are almost like a like if you had a module or you say this is chapter one and here are all the resources under chapter one, uh, that's really what a label is going to do is it's going to basically um, organize your post in a certain way. So let's say, for instance, I say chapter one and I hit add. It creates a heading for me right there. And then I can start adding assignments underneath it. So I can add assignments. I can add questions. I could add um, quizzes. Um, you could do that through Google Forms. But but basically, this topic feature helps you organize your content. And once you post an assignment, you just choose which label you want to put it under. So whether it's chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, whatever, um, you can do that by simply um, organizing it with topics. Here's another little hack that you might want to consider, too. Any time that you're posting an assignment, you may want to number your posts to just stay organized. So say, for instance, this is the very first activity that you're doing. Maybe it's 001, 002. There's a couple reasons why. So, for instance, if you tell your students, hey, you, you missed the uh, introduction to class activity, they're going to be searching all over their Google Drive for this, and it's just going to be very time-consuming. However, if you say, hey, you're missing assignment one, they could very easily find that in their Google Drive or Google Classroom. Another th reason why is because any time that you post an assignment in Google Classroom, it's automatically posted in Google Drive. In Google Drive, it creates an automatic folder, and if you have the 001 at the beginning and 002 at the beginning, etc., that will actually put it in chronological order, so it's better organized for you on the back end of things as well okay so other things that you could do with this classwork tab is you could create your own book so maybe you don't have a whole lot of funds uh, to create your own book you could do that very easily in google slides and just publish your slides so that it, it features it almost functions just like a book you could add videos you could add hyperlinks to help students understand content better so it might be a really helpful tool if you don't necessarily have access to your um, to a textbook. Another thing too is maybe you do a lot of research in your class, maybe add a Google custom search engine. So what a Google custom search engine will do is it'll allow you to search through specific websites that you tell it to. So for instance, if you wanted students to search for current events, but you wanted only to have, say, uh, CNN.com, FoxNews.com, uh, USA Today, well, whatever resources you have, when students type in somebody's name, like Donald Trump, it will only search through those specific websites. You're not going to get Wikipedia or any other fake news sites um, at all. You'll have credible resources at your fingertips. So that might be a good thing to to add to that section. All right, here's another hack for you, reclaiming the beginning and ending of class. Uh, whether you're doing um, exit tickets or do nows or um, bell ringers, or whatever you call them, you could very easily create a question, um, as you can see right here, and then you have some options. So not only can you do a short answer, you could have students just do a multiple choice question. Uh, so you could have students just take a quick poll. Um, what do you 
where, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What's your opinion on here? So you can do that. You also have the ability right here to turn this feature on and off, whether students can reply to one another. Um, or um, this right here, if you want students to post and then that's it, they can't go back, you can turn that on or off. Um, so that, that's a really neat feature as well. So uh, some things that you may want to consider is, uh, you know, establishing routines at the very beginning of your class. Uh, maybe have a beginning of the class agenda, as you can see right here. Um, students can click on that and go to it and see what you're doing that day in class. Uh, that would be helpful. Or um, let's say, for instance, you know, students are rolling in. Uh, they're coming into class and they're just posting things that they should not be posting. Um, you can actually turn off the... Um, and this actually is an old graphic, so I apologize about this. But this would be under the People tab. Uh, you could actually go in and you can choose right here where students can um, post and comment or students can only comment or only teachers can post and comment. So uh, this is an example of a poll. So if you wanted to see a poll, uh, how a poll works in uh, in classroom, uh, this, is, uh, this is one that I did a, a little while ago. Uh, do you like cheese? And then you can choose multiple choice answer right there. And then you can put in your answers, yes or no. Uh, and then you can post this. And then what's great about it is that students can then respond to it. And you can see, um, see their responses right there. All right, so let's talk about this, providing mastery-oriented feedback. It, as students uh, keep on taking um, online classes or um, we add online components, maybe we do a blended type of format, we're infusing more technology in the classroom, we cannot underestimate just the whole ability of providing feedback to students in a timely manner. Now, this is a view, if you went right into an assignment, uh, you could click on a specific student's name. You could um, basically see if they turned it in or not. You could add a private comment right here, and you could add a grade. Now, that's one way to provide master and feedback, and this is great because it's private. The students aren't going to see uh, each other's feedback, and that's very, very helpful. But there's other tools that you may want to consider as well. If you remember earlier, I had said that you can take pictures of worksheets and uh, scan them in. You, If you have the mobile version of Google Classroom, whether you're accessing this on your iPhone, uh, your Android phone, or a tablet, if you have the mobile version of Google Classroom, you can then use the pen features here to highlight and write on student assignments. And it creates what is called a, like a PDF. And it'll allow you to annotate on that PDF and draw on that PDF. And students will have two copies. One, their actual assignment that they turned in, and then the annotated PDF copy that you have. So that's one way that you could really make, make a lot of uh, headway in the grading. But you could also use this add-on uh, in Google Docs called Orange Slice. This allows you to create a rubric uh, simply by choosing a couple buttons and it will automatically generate it for you and you could share this with students. Students could provide feedback on what they felt. They could hand give it back to you. You could then provide feedback on you know, your perception of the assignment and it's a really neat way of providing feedback for students. Uh, another thing you could do, especially in the classwork tab, is uh, you know assessing students and providing uh, assignments. And so um, you know you could put in a self grading quiz in Google Forms. Uh, if you've attended some of my sessions on Google Forms, you probably have seen me talk about this a lot. Uh, it's a really neat feature, uh, so you could do that. You could create a virtual manipulative. So this is in Google Drawings where uh, you have a protractor right here, and uh, it's kind of transparent. And you can move it and measure uh, an angle, add the number of degrees right here, and then you can move it over here and use the drawing tools to draw. So that's just one way that you could create a virtual manipulative in Google Drawings. And let me just warn you, it works really, really well with Chromebooks and laptops. It does not work very well with iPads. So a virtual manipulative would probably not be a good idea if you have an iPad one-to-one -one initiative. Um, 
Also, you know, some things you can do too is you can make templates for students uh, with assignments. You could add, I like adding frequently asked questions in my assignments. I always know that there's probably two or three questions that students are always going to have. Instead of repeating myself over and over and over again, I could add those frequently asked questions in my assignment. Uh, or I could even break an assignment down like you see right here where, hey, this is step one. And they can click on this link right here. And it'll take them to step one in the document. Um, step two, they'll take you to step two in the document. So there's just some, some different ways that you can use Google Classroom. Um, and, and Google tools in general. So why reinvent the wheel though? You know, that's, that's the big thing. So if you have an assignment that you really enjoy giving, uh, I know I used to give current event assignments all the time in my classroom. Uh, why not reuse a post? And so you can reuse a post from any one of your classes and you can share it with another class uh, as well. So that might be a really, really, really good way of, um, sharing and not and saving yourself some time all right let's talk about hack number nine and that is flipping your google classroom so how can you flip your classroom well you could create a video uh using screencastify or screencast and just post it on youtube or upload it to google classroom through google drive you could do that students can watch that video and then they could actually go through and complete something here's another thing you could do too is if you use google forms you could create a self-paced lesson you do that by simply creating a new sections in Google Forms, so that maybe students put in their name, they read um, an art, they read a little bit of text, they go to the next section, they watch a video, they go to the next section, and then there's a quiz. So you could create a self-paced lesson in Google Forms and just post it right into your Google Classroom. Um, you know, another thing too you could do is let's say, for instance, you want students to watch uh, a couple different videos about a topic. Well, students can sometimes get distracted by those thumbnails or suggested videos. You can embed videos in Google Slideshow presentations, uh, either through YouTube um, or Google Drive. And now students are going to see the video. They're not going to see those distracting videos on the side. So you could add a video playlist to the classwork uh, section of Google Classroom and students could then watch those videos. And last but not least, you know, obviously you can create a banner at the top of your, your classroom. You can customize things, but let's say you wanted to create your own custom class banner. Uh, maybe you want to put your school logo. Maybe you took a picture of your class and you wanted to add a, maybe a collage or something like that. If you go into Google Drawings and you just create, you go to the File menu and then Page Setup, just set it up so that it's approximately maybe um, right here. You'll just choose choose this right here, change it to pixels, and change it to maybe around like 2,000 to 400. You might have to experiment with this a little bit. But basically, you can create a logo that looks just like this. When you're finished, just go to File and Download As, and just download it as a JPEG or PNG file. Those are just picture files. And then what you can do is you can go right here in your Google Classroom, upload that photo, and now you have a, a header that looks like this instead of this. So that, that's just a really neat way of customizing things in Google Classroom, uh, giving your, your classroom a little bit more flair. Um, it's, it's definitely something that is, um, is, is really neat to do. All right, well, I wanna thank you very much for having me. Um, my contact information is on here. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, you can email me if you have any questions. Uh, if you'd like a copy of this presentation, I just ask that you can uh, go to this bit.ly address right here. Just give me a little bit of feedback. This helps with my Google for Education certified uh, training status. Um, this is case sensitive, so it would be bit.ly and then a forward slash to our number one, a capital J, capital K, a lowercase x, and a lowercase s. Once you do that, it's just a couple questions. It'll give you a link to this presentation. So thank you guys very much. Uh, Lori, I'm going to turn it right back over to you. And if you have any questions. I also do a computer lab at the elementary from grade K through fourth grade, where I teach them typing and word processing and all that kind of good stuff. So I have a lot of experience and I use Google Classroom in every single class that I teach. So I love um, teaching it and showing how it works. And there are some brand new things out there um, that I'm really excited about to show you today. Okay, so we're going to talk about having a paperless classroom. We're going to talk about um, a streamlined workflow and we're going to talk about um, communications. So those are the three things.
things. Um, I'm going to kind of, I'm not going to be on my slideshow very much because this is, this slideshow is actually just for me today. Um, just to kind of keep me going in the right, in the right spot. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go right on into classroom to get started. So this is classroom. This is what mine looks like. Um, it's kind of overwhelming because I do have a lot of students. Um, I service, I guess I service 600-ish students every um, two weeks. So I have a lot. Um, but I do have one classroom that I'm going to go through to show y'all, and it's my simple K-12 classroom. But I did kind of want to show you what, um, you know, it looks like before you go in and what your class, where your classes are. So um, we're going to go right into this simple K-12 classroom. And we are going to start by talking about our assignments um, and um, just kind of how to um, go in into them and where to put everything, how to nest everything to make it easier on you. Now, a new thing that Classroom has this year um, is called Classwork. And so that's a new um, part of Classroom. And so here at this little question mark right here, if you do not see this on your classrooms, if it's one that you've taken out of archive or when you've copied and um, it's not a brand new one you've made or if you've turned it off, some people do turn it off, then you can come here to the question mark and click it and um, it shows you a what's new. So there's a lot of different things right here where you can get help and some feedback, but what we're going to talk about is this classwork page. So if you remove the classwork page, you're going to remove it. And then I'm going to show you how to add it also so that you can um, see this is kind of what it used to look like. Um, and I want to show you how to re-add that here. But we've got to, it's removing it. It takes just a second. So while it's removing it, let's just kind of talk about um, the different things that you can assign um, in, in classroom and, and the different things you can do. So you can have questions that you put in. Um, if you put a question in, you can put a short answer or a multiple choice, something that the students are going to answer. And then, um, or you can have an assignment, you can have an announcement, um, and then you can, um, let's see, I'm, I'm lost my train of thought for a second. Um, you, and you can reuse a post. So um, those are the, the four things that you can do with this plus button over here. So you have an announcement, an assignment, a question, and a reuse post. I reuse posts a whole lot because, like I said, I have a lot of classrooms. All of my third grade classes, individual teachers' classes, have classrooms. So I have to reuse that post, so reuse post a lot so I don't have to reinvent the wheel. So to add that classroom classwork page back, I just come here to this question mark and I go to add classwork page and ask me if I really want to do this, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I do. Okay. I love this feature. Um, it's probably one of my favorite things that Classroom, Google Classroom has um, added in the last few years. And um, because to me, it makes it very easy to streamline everything and you can makes it really easy for the student and the teacher to go in and look. Now, right now I am in teacher mode. So I am going to show you classwork from my side of it from the teacher side and I do have um, the student side pulled up also that I'll show you in just a moment. So when I'm in this teacher and um, the teacher end of it and I go to classwork this is going to show me every bit of classwork that I have and I have different topics um, that I have created and so it's going to arrange it by topic. So it gives me like everything that's under 901, everything that's under slides, fun, math, so it has all of that right there. And I really like that um, that option. So let me show you what it looks like from the student side of it also. So if I go in as a student into my simple K-12 classroom. Well, if it, oh, yeah, there it goes. So I'm going to open there for a second. Okay, so if I go into classwork as a student, it's going to kind of show me the exact same thing. Um, but I'd just like you to be able to see the view from the teacher and from the student so you understand what all it is. Um, so it's going to come in here and it's going to show me um, everything that I have assigned to me here. Now I can come to my view your work. A student can go to view their work. And it's going to bring up the things that they have done, it's going to show like these were assigned, this was turned in, this is missing, and this was turned in. So it's going to kind of show you everything. I can go and actually filter it 
out farther than that. I can just show assigned, just returned with grade, or, or just missing. And so that kind of makes it really easy for a student to come in, especially if they've been absent or something like that. They can go into class for classwork and very quickly click missing and they'll know what they missed that day if it was something that was due that day. So they'll know that they haven't turned that in. So I really like that feature because it keeps you very organized and able to um, go quickly through and find out what you're missing. And also for as a teacher, I love to go, be able to go through. I can look at each topic that I've had nested here and see um, what assignments are under there. And it makes it so much easier for me. It's all very organized and ready to go. Whereas used to, we just had stream. And stream is more like a social platform um, area. It's set up like a social platform, like uh, Facebook or things like that. And so you have a you just have a stream and it comes through and you can see everything um, that is done within the classroom. So you can see any announcements, any assignments, any questions um, that were that were posted. So classwork just makes it a little bit easier to see things as they are organized. Okay, so if I want to go through and I want to um, if I assign a um, give an assignment to a student and I go into classwork, go there. And I go to create. And I go to assignment. Um, if I want to create an assignment right here, I can. And, and I'm sure that you all know kind of how to create an assignment. But there's a couple things I just want to show you about creating an assignment so that this makes it easier for you um, when you are trying to create that paperless classroom for sure. So if I were going to come in here and I wanted to um, assign a, we're going to assign vocabulary if I could spell. <laughs> okay, so vocabulary, and I'm going to put that it's due um, tomorrow, which would be the, what, 18th? Oh, man. Um, it, I can't believe it's the 18th either. We talked about it being October. I just can't even believe it's October. I can't believe it's this late in the, in the year. Okay, so here is where I... I my topics come into play. So I can come to topic here as I'm assigning something and I could create a new topic. I can put it under another topic that I already have. Now, not a one for me is something that I use in computer maintenance all the time and that's why that's there. So I'm going to click not a one because I use that a lot. And then I'm going to attach something for my drive. So to attach for my drive, I'm just going to click my drive and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab a vocabulary assignment that we have done. Um, and when I do that, I am going to be able to make a copy for each student. That's the one thing that I really want you to see is how to make a copy for each student um, because that is something that's very important when you're going through um, your, uh, let's see. When we're going through, we're going to do key terms right here. Um, when you're going through to create something for your students and you want to be able to grade it, it's a lot easier if they have a copy of their own. Now, we're going to, if they can just view the file, all they can do right there is open it up, look at it. They can't make any changes, okay? So they can view it. So if it's something you want to read, if you want to have a passage or something like that, that's a good way to use that. Or you can come in here and do students can edit a file. Now, sometimes I do this, but actually do um, students can edit a file for vocabulary because I like to do that. And if it's something that I want them to work collaboratively on. So if I have like a list of 50 words and I want them to be able to do it in a class period, they're not going to be able to do that in class period. So I'm going to students can edit a file. I'm going to assign it that way. And then I'm going to assign certain numbers of the vocabulary words that I want each of them to do. Now, if I don't want to do it that way, I want each student to do their own work, which this is what I use more than anything else, and I want you to see it because it's very hard once you've assigned something to go. You can't go back and fix this. So I've assigned something. I'm going to assign vocabulary. I want each student to do their own. So I'm going to make a copy for each student. So the, the main thing to remember here is to not get hasty when you're making an assignment and just add your um, add your document and then click assign because you want to make sure that you, when like when you're looking at it, Okay, right here, you want to go make sure that you click that down arrow and make sure that you get exactly the one you want. If you want them to view it, edit it, or make a copy for each student. We're going to click make a copy for each student, and then we're going to assign that. Now, as a student, I can go back in. And 
and I should be able to click assigned and it comes up that's the first thing so vocabulary right here it's assigned now I can come in and go ahead and start working on it I'm just going to click it and go in and I'm going to start working on it so that I can show you what this looks like um, when it comes up um, it's just going to be, I mean, this one is actually blank because of the one I assigned, but they would just start typing here their vocabulary word, like we're going to just pretend that we have a different word. Um, we're going to pretend that apple is a vocabulary word and going to start typing that. Okay, so as a teacher, when I'm in here, I can always go in. to my classwork and I like to go in and see as a student is working um, on their assignment what they're doing and how how they're doing it um, so I'm gonna come in here and go to one that I've actually already done here's my one that's due tomorrow that's under 901 so if I go in there and I um, click the, that there are two assigned I can actually click this little um, tab right here for for the workshop one person um, except I think I was under workshop two that's not gonna work okay so I can click there and look at either one of um, my two students that it's assigned to and I can see what they're already doing on their assignment so as it's loading here we are we have it there I can see what they're doing now I wanted to I could add a comment here and post something as their teacher and comment on what they're doing so I could say um, good job keep it up and I can post it and then I'll just click post and that's going to to let that student see that as they're typing and then they can come in and also type back to me so if I go back into where they were at so I'm here and I go back in as a student to where I'm working I see that I have a comment oh it didn't show my, my comment Okay, scratch that. We're just going to, because I don't want to have to worry about what what I did, because I'm sure I did something wrong. Okay, so that is going right there. All right, so as I am in Simple K-12 classroom, and I can see what they've done here, if I want to come back into my classroom and be able to look at their classwork again, I can go and look at any single thing that they've done in here so if I wanted to quickly grade something let's talk about quickly grading something um, I actually call it speed grading and if I wanted to come in and do that then I could just come to any assignment here now there's several ways you can do this I'm going to show you this way because this is how I really like to do it and I'm going to click on the assignment okay it shows that I have two graded and I have turned in zero because they've already been graded and zero assigned because they've all already been done but if I wanted to go through and quickly grade something I can bring up the ones that are assigned or the ones that are graded or turned in I can come to any of them it'll click the exact same way it just did I can bring them up here and then I can just click on this little arrow to bring it up on my screen this is going to keep me from having to go out and go into my drive and into my classroom folder and all of those things so what I'm going to do is as I'm looking at these I can just grade it from right there so I just can click through scroll through look at everything that they've done make sure that it's all correct and I can see that it's all done right here now if I come back in here let's go to one that's not graded oh, I went to the wrong thing Okay, so if I come in here and I'm again, I'm looking at the things that I have assigned my classroom. Let's see. I want to find one that's not graded. So let me see if I have one that's not graded. Here we go. 
two that are assigned. Um, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go ahead and click my assignment again to view it. It's going to come back and show me, not my assignment. I'm going to click my two assigned. That's what I wanted to do. And it's going to show me what I have of each student. And I can just click and it'll bring up the first students. And that's where I can go ahead and grade it. I can put any kind of comment that I want in, uh, in here. Now, this is a little different than how it used to be. One thing that it used to that used to you would be able to do, um, and well, you can see it here, but I can do this. Uh, so if I wanted to, I can come through and highlight something here, and I can um, let's see. I don't want to. It's gonna. It's wanting me to accept a suggestion. It's gonna give me a suggestion, but I'm not going to do that. Instead. I'm going to add a comment. So when I highlight something here, the suggestions is new. Sorry, that's what I was trying to get out for now. So the suggestions is new, but if I want to come in here and add a comment, I can just highlight onto like the CompTIA and I can add a comment and I can put, um, be careful, you know, dot, dot, dot. We'll just put um, dot, 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 dot. I, just to show you what it looks like. And then I can comment and they can come in and they'll be able to see from their work that I have highlighted that and left them a comment for it. So then the student's gonna know they need to go back and change something on that assignment. So I really like that. Um, also, this is where I grade it. So you can do everything from right there. So right here in your classroom, once you go to the assignment, how many you have assigned or turned in, you can do either one. I can come in right here and then I can do everything from here. So now that I've done workshop one's paper, I can just close that out or actually let's just go ahead and put a grade on it. That way it shows that it's graded. So I'm going to put a 90%. Okay. Um, and we've got that done and I'm going to return it and return. And that means that that student is getting that back. So they are getting their work back. They can see their grade and all your comments. And then I'm going to go back into um, my key terms for my workshop one. Because, again, it's just I mean, my workshop two because this is just showing the ones that I have assigned, not the ones that are turned in because that's what we clicked in the first place. I'm going to click my little tab to bring this one up. And once that's loaded, I can do the same things. I can add a private comment about the total paper. I can highlight something and leave a comment. So if I wanted to highlight again and leave a comment, then I can do that. So I can leave that comment there. Or I can add a private comment here and post it. And only that student will see it. Or I can just grade it here. So we're going to put a 95, 85 for that one and return it and return. So now when I go back into my key terms assignment, it shows me, once I refresh it, it's going to show me that I don't have any more assigned. I only have two graded. So then I can just click my two graded and I can go into them that way. So now see it has, shows that I have none waiting to be turned in that need to be graded. I have none that have just been assigned. I only have two graded. And then their grades are going to show up on the left-hand side. I absolutely love this because um, it makes it super easy for me to look real fast. Okay, I don't have any that need to be graded because if I did, they'd be turned in. I don't have anybody missing an assignment. So everything's been graded and taken care of. So I really, really like that as far as being a paperless classroom because then I can just go in and um, make sure that everything's been graded. Um, okay, let's go on to um, one more thing that I really want to show you for the students. I, I wish I had more time to show you a bunch more stuff, but let's just go into the students. I want to show you one thing it does, and it actually does this for teachers too, but it's very important for the students, I feel like. Um, that's not what I'm going to do. Okay, let's come into the three um, 
lines at the, on the side and it shows you a to-do list and now the cool thing about a to-do list is this is going to show you a to-do list for every class across the board so if a student say they were absent and they have three or four teachers that do it to do that do classroom then instead of having to log into every single classroom and look and see what they missed that day they can go to their to-do list and what that is going to do is going to bring up a list of things that they need to do so these are things that they haven't done yet this one is due tomorrow so it's going to show it in red which i really like i can also break that down and i can go to different classes if if i want to but it's first going to bring up every class now as a teacher it's going to do the same thing i'm going to click those three little buttons I'm going to come to my to-do list this is another new feature and it's going to show me all of the things across the board for all of my classes and as you saw at the beginning I have a whole lot of classes so it shows me like kind of real quick what I'm missing so this shows me like I have one here that's turned in I need to grade I have one here it's turned in I need to grade I need to grade this one um, and so it kind of shows me like these have been graded they've been turned in so it shows me real fast the things that I need to go in and grade and um, the things that have been turned in so that makes it very easy to kind of get a real quick glimpse of what all you have to do what all you still um, need to look at and then I can also go in to my reviewed and this shows me that I don't have any work mark as reviewed I only have things that I need to review right now. So I can look, I can come here and I can mark this as reviewed. So say that I assigned this, see I have one turned in, one assigned. Um, if I was done or I have zero turned in, zero assigned, two graded, let's just go ahead and take that one off. We're going to mark it as reviewed because that's completely done. Like everything <clears throat> on that was done. It was graded, it was turned in, so it's done. I don't need to worry about that anymore. So I can go ahead and click that it's been reviewed, and that way it kind of gets that off of that page. It just keeps it organized. But if I ever needed to go back to it, I could go back and see that I reviewed it there. Okay, so we kind of saw how um, we look at comments, how we comment when we're working on a page, a document live like if you they were typing a paper and um, something like that you know we, we saw how we would go through highlight something and leave a comment like here and um, I love that when they're having to uh, write a paper and you're wanting them to expand on something or maybe you see some grammatical errors that are already taking place and they're just in their rough draft and maybe you could go through and say you know I'm going to comment on this I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to comment and say, you know, watch your run on sentences or whatever I want to do. So I just highlight it. And again, I do my little plus sign. Then it's going to be able to leave a comment for that highlighted area. So that's just awesome to be able to do. And then they can comment back on that and then you can resolve it. So um, let's talk real fast about um, if I wanted to uh, communicate with a parent. Um, and, and like I said, I try to keep my my um, classroom as paperless as I can and um, so you know that's where this is where you kind of have to make the, the decision do I want to give access to guardians or not um, I have it different in different classrooms my computer maintenance classroom I do have it access to parents because it is a paperless classroom as much as possible we do have some things that we keep in a binder but most of it is paperless so I want them to be able to get a summary of what the work that their students are doing and be able to see those grades so to do that I'm going to come to people um, and this is where I can add um, a student if I want to or I can also I can invite a student um, and I can also do guardians. So you see that I have that are invited here. Now, if I wanted to do something um, and communicate with a, a, a parent directly, now they can sign up to get a summary that comes weekly to them. If I want to do something different, like maybe I need to communicate with a parent directly, I can come here to email all guardians. If I, like, if there's like something big I want to send out, and I can do it that way, or I can come here to these three little dots. I can email a guardian just one at a time. So you're going to see that if I wanted to um, email all guardians, it just takes me out to my email and it has the email um, ready. It's, it's up and ready to go. And I just have to type it and push send, and it's going to send that to all of my students. Okay. So, um, but I can also email a student or email a guardian um, directly 
just by coming into people and going to the three dots next to their name. Um, and I can go ahead and email that, uh, that student or that parent. So I like that. I can also, if I want to just click the ones, like if there's more than one that I want to email, so say I have four students, I only want to email two of them, then I can come to actions here and I can email that way also. I can also mute a student, and that's very good if they're, like, not good at leaving productive comments um, that I want to keep on commenting on, then that's something that I can do also. Okay, I didn't get to probably everything that you wanted to see in this webinar, but I tried real hard. Um, I hope that you got something you can um, take away from this, especially the classwork um, and the to-do list that are new to Classroom. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to have that paperless classroom. And I hope it helped you some to see the student view. Um, and so I'm going to turn this back over. And if there are any questions, then I can answer those now. Awesome, Lori. Fantastic job explaining Google Classroom. I know you could just go on and on and on. Um, I'm going to give you a moment here to catch your breath and take the attendees inside the teacher learning community just to show them where they can find additional resources. Um, but I did want to share with you here inside the catalog, we have a Google Basics category, and this is 